Released from From Software in 2014, Bloodborne's an action RPG that has a lot of great features to it. Number one being the graphics, which is highly amazing, and second, the environments. But the third part, being able to invite people into your sessions and play with them, well, I mean, that's kind of common in many Soulsborne games. But I got to say, Bloodborne was really a great game. And I'll treasure this game a lot. Eventually, I'll have to get the DLC to get it 100%. Because without the DLC, you'll be stuck at 85%. But anyway, this game became my very first Soulsborne game. And my 125th Platinum. So... What is it about a Soulsborne game that really gets you in the mood to play more? Well, well, when you're a, a beginner at these games, you really start to get the hang of them. But anyway, in this video, I'm going to be talking about Bloodborne, give you guys some tips on, on how I got some of the trophies, and also show you guys my journey. So let's get started with today's video. So first thing you got to do is create your character. I made mine a male character and I took some time fixing them up and everything. And uh, right before I started my gameplay, um, I had to figure out a lot of things about this. But the origins right there, you choose between um, each one of those and each one will affect uh, your character's like stats and everything. So, if I had to suggest one of them, it would be Military Veteran. You get enough strength to take the enemy down and stuff, and you start out at level 9 or 10 on that. So, the first area you come to is Lesefka's Clinic, and at first, you don't have any weapons to defend yourself. There was this big werewolfy like creature and stuff like that in the next room and all I was trying to do was make my way outside but he ended up coming into this room and killing me and uh, this part right here you are supposed to die to go to the hunter's dream and let's go ahead and talk about the hunter's dream so right here where these gravestones are um, these are areas where you can uh, teleport to different areas that you've discovered. Um, and it takes only about like maybe about 5 or 10 seconds to load you. Um, here is of course your storage area where anything you buy from the bath messenger ends up there. Uh, over here is, of course, where you fortify your weapons, repair, add blood gems and arcane haze and all that stuff. And uh, fortifying your weapons, you basically have to have materials called uh, bloodstones. And then there's also twin bloodstones, uh, blood chunks, and then there's blood rocks. And uh, you do have to save up your materials in order to level your weapons up all the way to 10. And, um, I gotta say, though, this wasn't really that bad, honestly. Um, here's where you can add blood gems to your weapons. Um, each one of them, each one of these gems can go up to level 15. And they are pretty rare, so when you're defeating an enemy and stuff, uh, your chances of getting a blood gem, like, you know, like 14, 15, anything that high is pretty rare in my opinion. And uh, right here, I wanted to introduce you. This is German. He's um, one that you fight towards the end of the game. Here is where um, the runes are. You collect runes throughout the game. And uh, you can equip them on yourself later in the game. Um, you can't do it when you start out. And each one of these will either raise um, your health or stamina. Um, it can also raise the amount of vials and uh, quicksilver bullets and so on. So there's some pluses and minuses to each one. Um, sadly, I didn't have the hunter rune. And uh, I just wanted to run with what I had. For some of these fights so it worked out pretty well here's an insight vendor right here now insight is obtained by defeating bosses 
or um, consuming um, items like Madman's Knowledge. And each Madman's Knowledge you consume will give you about one or two insight. And the insight that you earn can be earned and uh, spent here. But you need to be aware also that uh, the insight will increase the difficulty of how you defeat an enemy. And these right here are gravestones that you can also go to to start uh, chalice dungeons. Now, each chalice, dun each chalice that you earn through either defeating an enemy or just finding them, um, you can come here to the Hunter Stream and, of course, obtain them. So after I chose my weapons, I came back to Lasefka's clinic and I started exploring around and checking out some of these little things on the ground and everything. And uh, if you find those around the world, um, they can give you some pretty good tips like, um, like, like close to boss fights, they will tell you to use bolt. Um, bolt is effective, fire is effective, um, use like standoff, um, parry, all that stuff, you know. And um, they'll tell you, um, they'll give you like tips and everything. So when I ended up here, um, the werewolf was there and everything. Um, all enemies respawn when you go to the hunter stream. And when you come back, they're back and everything. But they're gone as long as you're not in the hunter stream. So I ended up in this area right here, which was Cathedral Ward. And this right here, there were so many enemies here. So many enemies. I didn't know where in the world I was going, but I knew exactly where I had to go. I needed to go to my very first boss, which was the Cleric Beast. Now, he was not that tough because I leveled myself up a couple of times, and my strength was high enough, and um, all I had to do was increase my health a little bit more. So, I ended up in this area defeating all these enemies, getting some Blood Echoes, and um, I was saving up my blood echoes because I wanted to level myself up really good. Because some of the other areas that I end up, I have to be leveled up high enough to be able to battle some of the bosses. And also obtain enough damage on the bosses and stuff like that. Because there is a level required for each one of them. And um, if, if you don't have your level up enough then you're pretty much in trouble right there so anyway i came in this area i obtained some like uh, molotov cocktails blood vials and all that good stuff i wanted to clear out this area and stuff before i went to the boss and then um i threw a molotov at an enemy over there at both of them and they both just died and um so there's there was a dog down here and my health was so low that I literally uh, could not stay alive long enough on uh, on the rest of the parts and stuff. But throughout the time, I was um, getting stronger and understanding my mistakes in this game. So I just ended up um, discovering more items and stuff that will be added to like my uh, to my bath messenger vendor and stuff like that in the hunter stream. So, right after I defeated this last ball, after this last uh, enemy, I made it, finally made it to the Cleric Beast. And I was doing so darn good. I was using my charge attack method. Um, I was keeping myself healed and everything. And, of course, I had to be careful of, um, of course, his attacks because um, his claws really can cause a lot of damage. I was trying to parry him and it ended up working and um, sometimes my gun really wasn't that strong to hit his head and everything and I read up on um, online that uh, even Molotov cocktails are effective but I did not see that to be exactly true so I just took my time on this and um, Making sure that I healed up enough, back off, and roll, and all that stuff. Dodge his attacks and everything. And uh, when he made it to his second phase, um, that really wasn't that bad, to be honest. He was more vulnerable 
So I just kept parrying him, shooting him with my gun. And I had to be careful because I didn't have very many bullets. Uh, when you start out on the game, you're only allowed to carry 10 vials and 10 uh, quicksilver bullets. So it wasn't really that much, but you can increase it by collecting runes. So Cleric Beast really was a great enemy to, to battle. And he was my very first boss that I defeated in this game. I enjoyed this boss fight, and um, I, it made me more confident, to be honest. The more I moved on in the Bloodborne, the more I felt confident about myself that I could do it. And I don't normally feel confident in myself that much, but when I really get into a game, then I feel confident that I can do it. So, Cleric Beast was in a second phase now, and he does this, like, jump attack, and the more I rolled, um, the more I had to be careful of keeping my stamina up, and, um, it does cause your stamina to go down if you're, uh, you know, dashing or, uh, rolling and stuff. So, right before, I had his health, like, quarter of the way there. And then he did his, does this attack, and it ended up killing me. And I was, um, I figured out my mistake and everything. And I was telling people on my uh, Twitter and stuff that I figured out, I died my first time, but I figured out what mistake I made. So right after I died, I was back in this area where I had to defeat all the enemies all over again and make my way back to the Cleric Beast and defeat him. So, I made my way back to the Cleric Beast, and I figured out what I did wrong and everything, so I leveled my axe up a little bit, at least once, because I found a blood, um, blood shard, and then I also f um, got some, like, uh, blood echoes and stuff like that. I bought a couple more blood vials and stuff because I was running pretty low. And then I was feeling confident most off. So I did my dodging. I did um, I did the parries a lot more. My weapons were getting a little bit stronger at a time. Not all at once. And I was taking my time with this fight. So... Um, I used my charge attacks and all that, and then I ended up, at the end, defeating the Cleric Beast for my first boss, and I was so happy. I was so happy that I defeated this uh, boss for my first time. I felt very confident that um, if I could get this boss defeated, I could get the other ones defeated as well. Even though that I did get some help from other other like players and the AI on some on a couple of them or more, I just needed to you know relax, you know, really get into this game a little bit more, and then I would have uh, understood what I was doing. So later on in the game, I'm just showing you the guys just now as a preview. But there's this like enemy above, um, above like a building, and that's the nightmare. He will eventually be in the Grand Cathedral area, like um, in the Cathedral Ward or Grand Cathedral. I don't remember which area he's in. Uh, don't quote me. But be careful when going into this area because. Um, he will shine like this beam at you, this laser, and it can literally damage you a lot. So be sure that you have plenty of vials and also have your health up a lot. So I basically made my way back to this area a little bit. I wanted to give you guys a preview. And number one reason why I jumped down was because I needed to get this key here. And this key led me, it would have led me to the upper cathedral ward area. And it's important that you get all the keys in the game, guys, because it will lead you to the areas and stuff like that that are required in the game. So, yeah, I opened up this gate right here, and I was kind of um, between a 
rock in a hard place because there was this enemy right here that was in my way and um, I was just making my way back outside and uh, moving my way to the next area but anyway I made my way um, back and stuff like that and I was finally making my way past that laser and everything and I had to wait for the right time to move and everything and um, so I just jumped and dodged and stuff like that ran and um, that's how I got through it so that's really what you're supposed to do is a uh, dodge roll sprint your way through that and I swear that was one of the most toughest things uh, I've ever went through right there so um, I do apologize if I get some of these locations wrong. Um, if you guys uh, are watching this video, help me out on some of these locations um, in the comments. And I ended up making it to the next uh, lamp, so I was good there. And now, I was going against... My next boss was Father Gascoin, or Gascoin, or whatever. But anyway, gasoline, whatever. But um, he was actually a good boss right here. So he was my second boss I was going up against. And um, he, was a, he was a bit of a challenge because he would shoot his gun at you and all that. But I ended up getting enough attacks on him. And um, he really wasn't one of those top bosses that would stay still. So, I ended up getting the Odeon Tomb Key and, of course, my second trophy for defeating him. So, I made my way back to the Cathedral Ward. And in the Cathedral Ward, there's this, like, area where you can send certain innocent people to. And I was, um, I found a chest climbing up a ladder. And I ended up finding the Blood Gem Workshop Tool. Which I explained earlier what it is. It's in the Hunter's Dream and stuff. So, in the same area, um, outside of the area, there's this really big enemy right here. And he usually comes out of gates sometimes. And, oh my gosh, he is really tough. I mean, he can kill you like in literally one shot. And, um, I gotta say, he was a challenge at first. And, um, so, if you get a good charge attack on him, you can actually uh, eliminate him pretty easily. The other good news is, is that when he goes down, you have an advantage of putting him down pretty easily. And then you also get some blood vials, which is very important to keep track of. Every time I go down to, like, ten or so... I'll end up collecting more vials and going to areas and recollecting them over again. Now here's another thing I want to show you guys. I eventually ended up in this area right here and there were so many different types of vases. I was breaking them open to see if there was like any types of like items in them but there hardly is any and then there was this chest right here and i opened it and i ended up getting a pretty rare gemstone so that was actually pretty good right there and the next thing i did i went to um i went to check this area right here i had no idea where in the world i was to be honest and then there was this location here and um there was this like uh, thing on the ground that says don't give up and there was an autumn right over there and um, out of nowhere I just found a, another rune and everything and then I discovered um, this area right here and oh my gosh I thought I was going to fall off for a second there earlier I kind of when I was um, playing I kind of got scared right there but I didn't know how beautiful this environment really is. I mean, just look at this environment and the buildings, the sky. Everything about this game is so beautiful. I mean, I just love the way this game looks. It's quite amazing. But anyway, I made my way to the next area, which was um, 
I was still in the cathedral ward area and when you come out of the cathedral ward there's like uh, three different doors you can go through like left right or north and uh, that's where you like send people there and stuff <clears throat> but anyway um, there's these enemies right outside this building here a dog and they were, of course were right in front of a fire so I had to eliminate them before I made it to my next area and uh, I discovered some of these items on the ground here so I went to go pick them up and it was um, a couple of uh, cold blood there was a cold blood and there was a couple of Molotov cocktails and stuff like that and then I kept uh, going forward more and more and stuff like that and then there's these dogs that just comes out of nowhere and they they just like charge after me and I died on this part right here so um, this part right here I literally I didn't know where in the world I was some of these areas were kind of confusing to me so I just went with the flow and went to each area that I found and everything so I ended up at the edge of a building and there was this cut open cut area in the slab so I jumped down there and went through this window and then there was um, an area here and it was so dark I had to have a hand lantern for this area and there was these enemies that were like you didn't know that they were there and there was a chest right next to the stairs so I ended up coming here just for that and uh, I found uh, my very f uh, another gem and uh, another blood gem so um, I wasn't complaining there and then I just started looking around and everything uh, checking this area and stuff and uh, making sure that I wasn't missing anything you know and um, I did find an, another outfit and everything I gotta admit though some of these outfits in the game aren't that good but some of them I do like um, so I think my favorite outfit was the Kanehurst outfit so I was ready for the next boss and uh, right in front of the boss uh, gate there's this AI you could call and it's Alfred so in the battle right here I had to go up against the blood starved beast now he was at first pretty tough but then I read up on um, a god that said to like stay around the pillars and everything watch out for his combo attacks and all that so I did and um, the good news was I threw these um, blood um, cocktail, yeah, blood cocktail um, items and uh, blood beast cocktail, whatever you call them, and it attracted it to the wall, which gave me a advantage to kill him. And um, on this note, it was just a it was a pretty easy fight um, as long as you have this item here um, then you can like throw it at like a wall or something and the beast can go up against the wall and trap him there for a few seconds then you can have an advantage on hitting him so this fight took me a little while but it really wasn't that bad um, yes I did call up upon a uh, I did a call up upon uh, Alfred he's an NPC in the game and um, there was one cutscene in this game that I did not get to put in this video guys uh, when you make it to this one area where you uh, defeat Martyr Longarius um, you do have to you do meet this like one woman on the rooftop and she's a queen and everything so it ends up that uh, you end up um, you need to heal to her and join some kind of legion and uh, you earn this like one item that is needed as a tool so be aware of that as well 
So anyway, Cleric Beast, he was already on his second phase because if you make it to like the middle area of his health, he goes to the second phase. And his second phase evolves uh, multi-attacks. So I got out my fire paper and fire paper is pretty effective on many of the bosses and uh, bolt paper on some of them as well. So I got out my fire paper, started using my charge attacks with my axe because the axe is known for the charge attack that's uh, spinning three times and everything. And plus it also gives an advantage to knock the enemy down as well. So that's the other good news about um, why I chose the axe and stuff like that. Even when you push L1 button, you can extend it to where it can be a two-handed axe rather than a one-handed axe. And if you push L1 again, it will go down to only a one-handed axe. And you can also get out your pistol or uh, blunderbuss, whatever you call it. But, um, yeah, you can literally choose between three weapons and two um, guns. So that's a good thing about playing this game is the fact that you um, end up making it to these areas, exploring them, and then um, you just do your own way and stuff. So I ended up throwing up throwing another one of those uh, beast cocktails. Alfred ended up getting killed and stuff. So um, they said that if he ends up getting killed, he ends up um, assassinating some kind of the queen where you join the legion or something like that. He ends up murdering somebody and um, you know and so on. But anyway the imp um, Alfred ended up getting killed so I ended up working on the cleric on the blood starved beast myself. I almost said cleric beast. So I ended up um, going up against him a little bit more he was really wasn't that far from dying so I just kept using my charge attacks on him uh, fire paper as much as I could and eventually he went down and uh, right when he went down I was like so satisfied with this fight yes it was a little bit tough but wasn't as bad and I gotta say though, for starters, this was one of the coolest fights. And not only that, but you get the Thermaru Chalice as well. So you get two trophies in one fight, and it's a good thing because, you know, it gives you a little bit step closer to the Platinum Trophy as well. And it's also um, amazing also. But anyway, I made it to the next area. And I found a rune. And I got the trophy called Rune Con Contact. Or Contract. And I got the trophy for it. And I ended up uh, getting it done. I also discovered another boss. And called up upon a uh, player to help me out on this one. And this time I was going against Vicar Amelia. So I was, um, I did like this fight a lot because with this fight, uh, he was, he really wasn't that bad. Um, I was trying to save up uh, my blood echoes to level up some more. And, uh, fire was going to be my number one option for him, but I think he was kind of, um, resistant to fire or something like that i don't know but i just ended up getting a good enough charge attack to put him down and stuff i started doing charge attacks but i also had to be careful of my health and also um you know my stamina as well because i wanted to be able to get those um hits really well on him and uh, not only that as well, but I just wanted to make sure that I was staying alive long enough. And the bad part is, um, this en he ended up grabbing me, and uh, I thought I was going to die right there, like seriously. But uh, anyway, he ended up grabbing me, and uh, so yeah, that's how everything ended up right there. So, I just took my time with this fight, kept going. My strength was really good on this part as well. Um, 
me and this other person, I mean, both of our strengths combined, we can actually, uh, you know, eliminate it pretty easily. And uh, Vicar wasn't really that bad of a boss. Um, his second phase wasn't that bad either. Um, however, I did try shooting him. I, I was... Uh, I did get killed by him at least a couple of times and I thought that uh, pairing him would work but it didn't in the end but then after like five minutes or so into this fight I ended up defeating him and I got the next trophy for defeating him so yeah big bonus right there so the next area I went to, um, I had to climb a ladder to get this like uh, next item that I needed um, called the yellow uh, backbone or something like that. I think it was called that. I don't know. But um, yeah, I think this was the next tool I needed right here. And I found it right up here on this like tower and uh the cathedral ward i think it was upper cathedral ward don't quote me but um yeah so um anyway this next area i had to defeat these enemies um i think i was located in uh, the unseen village in yargle and uh unfortunately these enemies were pretty crazy and uh they were kind of nuts to be honest these women really murdered me so I made my way down this elevator and um, I made it into the next area. Uh, went back up because I didn't want to get too far ahead. So I just didn't want to go too far on this part. And so I just kept uh, moving forward and stuff. Um, I wanted to make sure there was like no items behind the elevator but then I kept moving forward and I wanted to make my way to the next area where I went up against the Witch of Hemwick. Now um, the Witch of Hemwick she's really not that bad to defeat however I will explain what you gotta do and everything but I'm still in the Unseen Village and your next objective was to uh, make your way towards her location and that's where you'll uh, go up against her and then there was these uh, enemies and stuff like that and hoods they were trying their best to kill me I ended up finding an autumn behind a gravestone and then there was this um, big enemy right here um, and then I ended up knocking them off of the uh, ledge and uh, that was just uh, one of the funniest things that's ever happened and uh, here we are, we have an enemy here that likes to throw Molotov cocktails at you. And then I end up going straight inside of the farm. Um, and then there's like two enemies in there that just comes out of nowhere. And I didn't see it coming. And I was checking on my god on my phone and everything. Uh, that's why I was taking uh, a little bit of a pause for a second here. And... Um, I was just checking out uh, if there was like any tools nearby and there wasn't so um, probably the next area was where there was going to be my next tool so um, the good news about it was um, I ended up um, yeah collecting all the tools really wasn't that hard just take your time through this game um, all in all, this game actually took me 70 hours to complete, and um, if I had to say this game was a 7 out of 10 difficulty, well, maybe to you all it would be more than an 8 or a 10, um, but it really wasn't that bad. I still give it a 7 out of 10 difficulty. Um, but I thought this game was really good. So here I was going up against another one of these enemies. And he kept whacking me so hard. His uh, combos was really hard to roll out of. And I had enough strength to take him down and stuff. And it actually felt really good. So I improved my strength a little bit more. Um, 
a while back and everything and I ended up getting a cold blood which you can consume to get more blood echoes and collecting those are really cool so now I made it to the boss of Hemwick now she isn't really that tough of a boss but you hit her like four or five times and she can transport to another area and um you know and you got to make your way um looking for her but you also have to watch out for her henchmen because she will call up upon them and stuff like that like every few moments or so so um do your best and uh just take your time through this area because the witch of hemwick really isn't a bad boss this was um a pretty good boss fight to be honest the only thing um that's uh, different about this one she'll call up upon another version of herself and um, the other one will be presumably dead but then the other one will heal herself like um, quarter of the way of health you know and this time you have to handle two versions of her rather just than just one of her and you also have to handle her henchmen, you know, just coming up to you and stuff like that. So, like, even if you're trying to eliminate her um, for this first phase, then you're pretty much, um, they'll pretty much follow you pretty slowly. But they do take big, giant steps um, towards you and stuff like that. And they also have a, a skith and, or a scythe and they will try their best to um, kill you with it. The other thing too about the Witch of Hemwick is she also has powers where um, she'll call up upon orbs and these orbs that if they hit you they'll keep you in place for like a few seconds so you gotta do your best on avoiding those by any means necessary. She'll even call upon, um, she even has this power where um, she calls upon this, like, I don't know, it's like a purple, like, like, a big purple, like, power, and, um, if you get near it and stuff, um, it can damage you a lot, so just be aware of those two powers. So, as always, I just, um, I was on the second phase, and the first witch of, um, Hemwick was there but then the second one healed herself quarter of the way so I had to deal with both of them at the same time even with two times the amount of her henchmen just coming in and also watch out too she will grab you and suck some of your health out of you so be sure to avoid that by any means necessary don't get too close to her but at least give enough room to where you can um, do your stabbings and stuff like that on her and then eventually you'll end the boss fight with a big victory so yeah she'll um she'll come up to you she'll grab you she'll suck some of your life away so just be very careful of that as a as you just saw a second ago that's what she did to me and there was a few occasions on this that i nearly died I didn't die once on this, but I'm just saying, though, I nearly died twice. And luckily, I had blood vials and stuff like that. So, I just uh, started working my way, um, knocking off both of these enemies, uh, both of versions of her, um, getting their health down and everything. And again, I could not avoid her orbs at all that she calls and tries to like yeah I just couldn't handle it so I got the first one down and now all I had to do was get the second one finally finished and when she went down all of her hench ones went down and I got the trophy for it so the next thing I went to was the abandoned workshop this right here you get in a you get a trophy for discovering it and um, this area was actually pretty interesting because um, 
you know, there's a lot of enemies here, and also had to be careful here as well, because there is a lot of enemies, um, downwards, upwards, um, left, right, but the real place I had to go to here was, I had to climb a ladder and look for this one, um, tool that I needed, and then upwards also led to another area, and I'll show you that in just a sec, but yeah, just take your time through this, and if you have a hand lantern, use that in this area, because some areas can be dark. And there's also a chest like right under the stairs. Now topwards, after I went upstairs, there was another, uh, there was this hunter badge that I also needed to get. And that's one of them I needed because hunter badges grant you additional weapons and stuff. Now this part right here um, was the craziest of all. I was deep in the... Um, uh, abandoned workshop and after I went down here I opened up these doors and I was in um, another part of Hunter's Dream so right after I entered this area I got the trophy called the Source of the Dream and this is for discovering the abandoned uh, workshop so I'm just saying though um, this area will lead you to the abandoned workshop just be careful making your way down because you can have an immediate death happen to you and uh, of course this is also a source of where you'll find the hunter stream and uh, well this is actually a version of the hunter stream but yeah you get the point the next boss I had to go up against was dark beast Parl. now he's an all electric enemy right here and I gotta say this boss was pretty tough but he wasn't as bad but the good news about this boss was he, all you gotta do is parry him and also ended up getting um, another item and also got the trophy for defeating him then I got another tool that I needed and then I headed on outward to the Yargle Unseen Village area and I eventually found um, this character right here and I don't know what happened but later on I had to defeat her defeat him or her whatever it is and um, I don't know why um, I don't know what happened there but anyway I had to go against three sh shadow of yarnums and this wasn't a really bad fight I got my strength and my um, my vitality up enough and also got my stamina up enough and um, some of these shadow yarnums they can throw fire at you and in their second phase they can also bring out a sword so um, be sure that you have a, a bolt weapon out or um, or bolt paper anything like that also called upon somebody to help me out with this fight because you know how it is three uh, two is better than one to be honest when you're going against three of these um, you're pretty much um, you know you're in trouble and stuff but anyway I was um, going up against these uh, enemies and one of them was like um, I don't know had moves like Ghost of Tsushima and then they <laughs> And then the others, um, they were just uh, throwing fire at me and stuff like that. So I had to be careful on this because their attacks are pretty dangerous. Especially um, with the sword and everything. So I just kept going and going on the moves and everything. And I, from time to time, would activate the, um, the power on my tonitures. And the Tonitrus is a pretty good weapon, if I do say so. You can even call upon um, a power on it where it can activate Bolt. So, like, it will cause it to, like, 
start electric bolt on it. So after I defeated the Shadow of Yarnum, I got the trophy for defeating him. And then my next boss I went up against was Rom, the Vicious Spider. And I gotta say one thing, this boss fight wasn't that bad. I died multiple times, but this boss fight was actually pretty fun. So your first objective, really, get rid of these little bitty spiders because um, they can jump to you, they can hit you pretty hard, and um, after you do all that, be sure to watch out for ROMs um, attacks like this, for example, um, and hit it as much as you can, because when you do um, defeat these little spiders, you have more of a chance of hitting ROM than you do with the spiders around. So, right after I got rid of some of these spiders I ended up um, going up to Rom and I killed it and um, so yeah it really wasn't a bad fight these spiders are really weak to bolts so be sure you have bolt paper or even the Tanatras because this weapon right here is especially good so right when I thought I was gonna have victory I ended up dying here but then I improved my level up at least five levels and then I was ready to go back in and defeat of course Rom again so right on the second one I had a lot of luck on this and also upgraded my uh, Tonitures a little bit more so I was pretty um, I was pretty lucky on that I defeated all of the spiders and everything but I had to be careful of its its attacks and stuff so um, last but not least on this part I ended up um, getting the last few hits that I needed and um, without any precaution I just went up to him and hit him the last time before he started his next attack so yeah I was pretty happy about this fight right here and also ended up getting a Ken Coldblood so that was a good thing and right up ahead there was this like girl right here and um, that's Yarnum right there so Yarnum you see her in a couple more places but she ends up being um, in one of the child's dungeons and stuff so the next part right here is where I had to go against the one reborn and uh, you had to defeat these bell ringing um, ladies and stuff like that up top from him um, there are six of them you had to kill and uh, after you kill all six of them then you're ready to go downstairs and start killing the one reborn because right after you kill all those ring bells uh, ladies then he becomes more vulnerable so with using fire paper one reborn is very weak to fire damage so be sure that you have plenty of fire paper and stuff like that on you and um, then you'll um, really get a good um, amount of damage off of him so I ended up hitting him on the back leg and I also have to be careful too because he also fills the floor with poison so you also got to be aware of that too um, he can fill the floor down below him with poison so um, move back whenever that happens and also he will use his claws to um, you know get the best hit on you and be sure that you have a lot of vials because you're going to need all the vials that you need for this and I gotta say though this fight was actually a lot of fun this was another one of my favorite fights right here I died only twice on this fight but in the end I ended up um, getting this uh, fight done with flying colors and so my last hit was one of the hits that I actually liked on him and I ended up dodging his attacks and I think I did a charge attack on him a little bit and then I was finally finished and then I ended up getting a trophy and 
I was actually really happy I gotten this far so far. I also got a yellow black uh, backbone, not black bone, but backbone. And then this next part was where afterwards I took this carriage and I ended up in Canehurst, Canehurst Castle. And um, this area was quite remarkable. I actually explored all over it left to right. And I ended up in some areas that um, I never thought I'd end up. And then I ended up in a area where I found another tool or another rune. And then, um, and then I was right below the, um, of course, right below the uh, library and stuff. And then I found a another item which I needed. It. But anyway, I was climbing this ladder in the abandoned workshop. I had to go look for a certain item, so I'm putting this in uh, a little bit of flash forward mode to make this a little bit faster. But anyway, there was um, a couple of doors. There was a door I had to open and reach this next area called uh, the choir. And uh, this gave me a trophy for it. And then right after this part right here i was grabbed by the nightmare and was sent to the nightmare lecture hall so this is how you actually get there from the upper cathedral ward and that was that was actually a really interesting area then i made my way and went up against martyr logarius now he was a pretty fun boss this was actually a great fight right here and then afterwards you go talk to this uh uh queen and then you join her legion or something like that and then you get another trophy as well. Um, the next fight was on Magdala. And this was actually a pretty fun fight. All you gotta do is just shoot its head a lot. Um, parry and stuff like that. And then you'll kill it quite easily. Next fight I was going up against was the Celestial Emissary. Or Embassy or whatever. And... Um, pretty easy fight if I do say so they say that this is the most easiest fight in Bloodborne I gotta admit it really was easy so after you kill um, the celestial emissary all the little alien creatures dies around it as well so the next part was I broke open a window right behind the fight and I had to come and look for an item that I needed a tool called a call beyond this was one of the tools that i needed in the game so to get the um hunter's craft trophy i needed to get this item and it was right on a body that was hanging over this rail and yeah there are certain types of items you do have to collect all the weapons the tools really not that hard then the next boss i went up against was a brightest daughter of the uh, cosmos now this was a great fight even though i had two other people with me this was still a great fight i think these two were ai or something and one of them was a um i don't know i got two trophies out of that anyway and then i come here and i see alfred now you'll see a difference in alfred when you meet the queen he's um He's dressed up really nicely, like in a uh, knight uniform. He also has this mask over his face and stuff like that. But then you realize he committed suicide. So he did kill somebody um, in, uh, in the area where you kill Martyr Logarius. So he killed himself and you get his, uh, you get an outfit or something like that. Now this is one of the fights I want to talk about, Mikolash. Now this fight was really annoying, but then when I looked up a god for it, it said have, um, throwing knives for this and he's really affected with poison. He's really effective with it. So, up above the rail, he um, ran down the rail. He transported there. And I ended up throwing these uh, poison knives at him. And he kept, uh, I call it, um, a teleport glitching. So, he keeps um, coming in and 
and out and everything and I kept throwing these poison knobs at him and it took about 10 minutes for all of his health to finally go down of course you can not get a couple of sword swipes on him but he'll keep disappearing on you and stuff and that's what's the most annoying thing about this fight is the fact that you're going up against him and he just runs from you that is so annoying right there so I just kept hitting him with my knives and it only took about another minute or so and he eventually went down and I got the trophy and stuff like that and then I lit up the next lamp so yeah I got the trophy for defeating him and so on this next part right here was where I needed my last tool called a choir bell a call beyond was one of the two tools that I needed to get the trophy so I was in this area and I got I needed the choir bell I ended up grabbing it before I got killed by frenzy and I was pretty happy with that next part I had to go to the hunter's dream and maximize my ax my axe up and I got weapon master for that and um yeah that's another trophy down last but part of the last part here I went up against Margo's wet nurse she is uh, one of the last and final bosses of the game now um, after you do defeat her the hunter's dream catches on fire and this is where the final fight takes place it takes place in hunter's dream located in the gardens so right after I defeated um, Margot's wet nurse um, I got the trophy for it it took about maybe it took about 30 seconds I thought at first it was glitched on me and I was kind of like worried for a minute there and then it finally said nightmare slain and I got the second umbilical cord that I needed out of three but there is four umbilical cords that you can find in the game as well but um, you can find them um, they're a guide and stuff like that but anyway I was um, I was ready for the next part um, which is the um, going back to the hunter's dream seeing if I needed to get the rest of the weapons and there was two weapons out of three that I needed in the um, in the vendors and I was alright with that but I was kinda disappointed that the third one wasn't there so I had to do a chalice dungeon to get the other weapon however the burial blade and the and the um, second uh, right weapon was there and I forget what it was called the Rasminish and whatever it's a German name but uh, I got the uh, last so my last weapon that I needed was the beast call and um, I got the trophy hunter's essence um, this was one of three trophies I needed then afterwards um, all I needed was to beat her and then I'll have the platinum trophy so I had to ask my friend Yiz YT to come join me and help me out he was more advanced at this game than I was spending uh, more than 3,000 hours on the game all together so he has more experience than I do but anyway guys yeah that was it and she was defeated and I'd be getting the last two trophies I needed so yeah guys that's the end of this video thank you for tuning in don't forget to like subscribe to my channel for more upcoming videos and I will see you next time